is TechStrong TV. Thanks for joining us on TechStrong TV. I'm Bonnie Schneider, and joining me now is Duncan Greatwood. He is the CEO of Zage Security to discuss renewable energy and cybersecurity. Duncan, it is so great to have you on. It's really my pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. That's great. Well, just last December, the U.S. Department of Energy's Natural Renewable Energy Laboratory announced the first cohort of its Clean Energy Cybersecurity Accelerator Program, and Zage Security was selected. So congratulations, first of all. And, and if, tell us how it's been going. It's, it hasn't been that long, but what, what have you been doing so far? Yeah, well, it's uh, it's a very active program. Actually, it'll be all uh, done uh, by uh, by the end of March. Uh, this first phase, so um, it's it's launched right into it. Um, you know, renewable energy is an opportunity to improve resilience and security, um, and it's also a risk that security might get worse. So we kind of have to balance off those those two things. And um, really, what the program is doing is is stimulating some of the risk situations that happen in renewable energy infrastructure and then bringing a few of the newest and most innovative solutions and, and dropping them into those environments and sort of saying, well, you know, if, if those new solutions were there, would the hackers be stopped or would, would they still be able to go and do their, do their bad work uh, that, that, that they want to do? So that's really what's going on uh, right now at, uh, at NREL and, and at the facilities that they provide. Well, just to backtrack a little, can you tell me a little bit about Zage Security, um, how you got started and, and what, what you're working on in general? Yeah, you bet. Um, so Zage Security is a cybersecurity company that targets what we sometimes call real world operations. Um, and that means anything where there's a physical aspect, the things that we rely on every day. You know, how, do we, how do we transport ourselves? How do we create our food? How do we create and use energy? Um, and that's a new area in cybersecurity to a large extent until a few years ago, it wasn't really an area of, of, of deep activity. But of course, in the last few years, it's become a uh, you know, very sensitive area. You know, we do rely on those things every day. And there's a whole bunch of bad actors who are either trying to extract ransomware from private companies or attack things from a national security perspective. Um, the, uh, the war in Ukraine has intensified concerns and Hacks like the Colonial Pipeline hack of, of uh, 2021 um, was, was perhaps a bit of a, a warning sign for the, the whole of that sector that they needed to start paying more attention to it. So um, Zage is taking a new approach in that industry. Historically, uh, cybersecurity in that space has been about keeping uh, the bad guys off the network, so just not allowing them in at all. Uh, and then secondly, um, if something did go wrong, there would be t detection solutions. So you'd, like having a you know, video camera on your house, you'd have a detection solution. So if somebody was rootling around, then you might have a chance of spotting it. Um, both those approaches are kind of broken down because the bad guys do get on the networks fairly regularly. Um, and um, just knowing that they're there is useful, but of course, we'd much rather just stop them um, being able to do what they want to do rather than just detecting it. Um, and that's the approach that Sage is bringing, that we are uh, providing a what we call a fabric, uh, which is really just an overlay of software components that we drop into the operation, and which is there to make sure that nobody can do things that they weren't authorized to do. Um, and so we kind of take control of, of access and, and inter interactions that are happening between the different systems and different equipment. And we, we impose this method of, of authentication and and uh, authorization to, to control what's happening that, that you know previously didn't didn't exist, and that's super relevant to situations like renewable energy and like what NREL is doing. Of course, um, in renewable environments, there are often lots of little solar farms, little wind farms, very distributed. Um, the old way of doing energy, or a few giant power stations, was a very different kind of a model. Um, and so, when you have these distributed environments. Um, that introduces a whole bunch of new risks. They have to interact with each other in new ways. And, and they, you know, sometimes they're working, it might be windy today, it might be sunny today. Um, it might be that you're using, uh, uh, you know, nuclear energy today, but constantly varying. And so it's a very complex set of controls that has to exist. And, and Zeta is really here to you know, help us solve those problems. 
Th that's a really good point that you mentioned where you have these environmental factors that come into play. And in the wake of climate change, where we're seeing more of these extreme weather events, how has that affected cybersecurity and posed new challenges for you? It has. Well, I, I think it, it's a multi-layer answer to that, to that question. So firstly, it's accelerating the push for renewable energy, as we all know. Um, and so we have to make sure that the resilience of the grid is increased, not decreased when we do embrace uh, renewables. Um, and um, you know, I think the story today on that is mixed, quite honestly. Sometimes it is increased, sometimes not. Um, there's also direct effects on the grid uh, when, um, uh, when there are either weather events or wildfires or any of the other consequences that can come from climate change. Um, you probably remember a couple of years ago, there was a big ice storm in, in Texas and you know, they don't okay. have too many ice storms in Texas, but once in a while they do. It's very intense. It went on quite a long time. And they, you know, they had to bring in tens of thousands of outside uh, technicians from outside, from outside of the state of Texas and give them access to the Texas infrastructure to help them fix it. Well, you can imagine if you take 50,000 people who've never had access before and give them access to your digital infrastructure, there's going to be some of them who have malware on their laptops and maybe they don't even know it's there, but they do. And so you're, you're kind of in responding to weather events, you're actually exposing a whole bunch of cyber risk in that process. And that increases the need and the intensity of the urgency of, you know, let's make sure that that one person who has malware on their laptop, that they can, you know, worst case, maybe they infect one substation in the grid. They're not infecting every substation in the grid, not allowing kind of a digital contagion to happen across the grid when those things do, do, uh, do end up uh, jumping into the system, you know. Yeah, and so keeping this security in mind and, and looking at these new um, arenas where we could have more threats to security, how, how would you go about, how, how do you go about testing these measures, um, particularly in the energy sector? Yeah, um, so, I, you know, there are multiple levels of testing that go on. There are commonly defined sets of standards and, and tool sets that uh, a, a company that's buying cybersecurity will run through and they'll test for uh, you know, vulnerabilities in the security solution itself and also whether the security solution is able to uh, block attacks against the thing that it's trying to protect. Um, in uh, real world infrastructure, the baseline is often very low. So there may be equipment with no password at all, um, or it may seem to have a password but actually very easy to bypass. Um, and so what Zayt is bringing is the ability to overlay on top of what we might call that legacy uh, equipment or legacy architecture, um, modern cybersecurity methods. So just as if you want access to your bank account, you might have to sign in with a password and you might have to provide a second proof like you proof via your cell phone that it's really you. Well, we can, in, we can impose those kind of multi-layer protections even on top of these older pieces of infrastructure. And so uh, a, a test range like uh, the NREL is providing will run through all of those kind of attacks. You know, is, it, is it resistant to a password attack? Is it resistant to a uh, so-called MFA uh, bombing or MFA exhaustion attack and so on and so on. So they have a whole suite of things that they, they run through. Um, they're also looking at the real world resilience of this thing. So if your solar farm is disconnected from the outside world, does it continue to work? Can the security measures work locally even without being able to refer back to some central security point? Um, and um, that kind of resiliency is just as important as the cyber kind. Um, you don't want cyber to kind of bring things to a halt just because it's lost a network connection or, or any of the other problems that uh, can happen in day-to-day -day digital life. Um, and so the testers also run through those kind of scenarios and you know, making sure that um, it'll work in practice as well as in theory. Has there been any uh, challenges, that, unexpected things that happened in your development, especially working in renewables? Yeah, um, I, I think the you know cybersecurity is constantly throwing up new challenges. It's the nature of hackers that they're inventive, 
uh, people and, and you know it's a quite a entrepreneurial community in its own strange uh, way that people are, are coming up with new ideas and new, new approaches all the time um i i think for us um for a long time there was kind of doubt in people's minds you know did they really need to take these strong measures um and i you know as i sort of hinted a couple of minutes ago i think only in the last 18 months has have has the whole industry sort of shifted perspective and say you know what it doesn't matter whether we're an oil and gas pipeline or a, a solar farm or we're you know we're, we're manufacturing um, you know packaged foods um we are critical infrastructure we are under attack and they've shifted their mindset and um you know technical term that sometimes uses a zero trust approach um so they're not uh, going to trust you just because you appeared on a network or just because you have one one the laptop or what have you um they're 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 sort of adopting these much stronger approaches and um i guess uh, with our cyber uh, perspective in some ways it surprised us that it took them so long to get there that it took them you know it took them a while to realize that they had to do it but i think the flip side of that is how fast people have been able to move especially in the last 12 months um in in really uh you know kind of starting to to aggressively head down that that path and you know companies like utility companies they have a a well earned reputation for a stately rate of progress on on many issues that's kind of how they they operate by default but whether it's it's you know renewables or many of these other areas you've seen people who kind of previously might have taken 10 years to adopt a new approach kind of saying hey you know what we want to get this rolled out in you know 2022 or 2023 or some you know quite quite rapid uh, time scale Yeah, that's true. It's it's interesting you meant the pacing has picked up. Now, I was reading about your background and how you've previously worked in leadership roles at Apple, Topsy, Postpath. In your you know, vast experience in this cybersecurity world, have you ever seen an acceleration like this happening where um there has to be this this very up to the minute progress expected in cybersecurity? Yeah, I I I think we have seen this loop before a little bit. Um I think in the last time we went around it was really more focused on purely digital environments though so and the dis- distinction here between the world of the carpeted office building um you know imagine you're working in an insurance company you know really you're mm-hmm. processing documents backwards and forwards um and um if you wind back 15 years then uh many of those environments were similarly poorly protected once you got inside the firewall you could do many many things that were bad um that sort of switch into uh protecting individual assets individual pieces of data that happened in IT 15 plus years ago is now happening in in critical infrastructure um and um uh you know it's um, it's a change of mindset for sure um and you know every customer we talk to you know it's a different state some of them have already fully embraced it and they're they're hammering down the path some of them are uh you know uncertain you know does this apply to me and do i need to do it and others of them uh, honestly are are still in in resist, resistance mode a little bit you know i i don't want to do this i you know i can figure out I'm okay where i am um but um uh you know the lessons of the last cycle i think in in the it world as opposed to the operational world the lessons in it were um eventually everybody kind of embraces it and you know mm-hmm. people are pragmatic and they they find solutions like sage that let them do it in a practical way and it's not quite the nightmare that they perhaps thought it would be when they when they first started looking at it um and you know really for these businesses it's a requirement now and when a requirement exists a hard requirement like this one then um solutions begin to make themselves known of which you know sage is certainly important one, i think You know that that is a, that is true and it's definitely coming more to light as you said with all different sorts of threats uh, posing um uh, on organizations more and more each day and uh Duncan Greatwood thank you so much for sharing your insights from Zage Security congratulations again on the accelerator program you're going to have a very busy next couple of months i'm sure Yeah no doubt it was my pleasure thanks for talking Great well thank you so much for joining us on Tech Strong TV thanks Duncan we're going to have a lot more coming up